To paraphrase Shakespeare, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. And through methodologies and practices first created by Johns Hopkins medical pioneers like William Welch and William Osler, we have asserted some control over our collective destiny in diagnosing and treating illness and prolonging life. Life expectancy has increased to 78 years in the United States, but the comparable improvement in the quality of life, especially at the end of life, has not improved to the same extent. Increasingly, a healthcare paradox is emerging. At a time when biomedical research is making great progress, people are not necessarily living better. A sobering fact, given that U.S. health expenditures now surpass $2.5 trillion annually. That's why we at Johns Hopkins believe we have an opportunity to shift the paradigm of how medicine is practiced, taking it to a new level of success through the promise of individualized health. Starting in 1990, the Human Genome Project assembled hundreds of scientists from around the world who needed over a decade and nearly $3 billion to complete their first human genome sequence. But today, in our Next Generation Sequencing Lab, we're able to sequence an individual's complete genome in just a couple of weeks for just a few thousand dollars. And we predict in five to 10 years, patients will be able to have their entire genome sequence for the cost of a simple blood test. This means we can develop and target therapies to address the unique cellular characteristics of each patient and the genetic blueprint of his or her disease, saving money and valuable time. This is already being applied with breast cancer. In fact, of the 100 or so published genetic blueprints for cancer, 90 of them were determined at the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center here at Johns Hopkins. Cancer was the natural place to start, since it's a disease of acquired defective genes. But individualized health has expanded beyond genetics to other areas as well. Using a cardiac MRI, we create patient-specific computational models of the heart that replicate cardiac rhythm dysfunction. We then conduct simulations to determine what is the optimal and the most minimally invasive treatment option. With heart disease and cancer accounting for nearly half of all deaths in the U.S., the potential impact is enormous. But individualized health is as much about prevention as it is about treatment. It's a collaboration between patient and doctor as they learn today whether a patient is predisposed to develop a particular disease tomorrow, next year, or in 20 years. And consequently, the way we teach physicians today is vastly different than the way we might have taught them as recently as 10 years ago. The accumulation of knowledge is so fast that we increasingly feel it's important to give the students principles rather than making them memorize a string of facts. What do you hear? How do you interpret that murmur? So as Johns Hopkins engineers, scientists, and clinicians work to transform, even revolutionize, the practice of medicine, one can't help but wonder what new developments lie in store for all of us.